I was diagnosed with stage 3 ovarian cancer in June 2007, age 59. And following diagnosis, I had surgery and then chemotherapy. Since that time, I've had a further two rounds of chemo and also discovered that I carry the BRCA2 gene mutation, as do my daughter, sister, maternal aunt and cousin, maternal uncle and cousin, as well as my mother and grandmother. There were signs and symptoms, but they crept up on me gradually and I didn't recognise them for what they were. I put all this down to my age and a busy, demanding job. It was only in the six to nine months before diagnosis that it seemed more significant. By then, I looked like I was pregnant at the end of each day. I was having to urinate every two hours, even through the night, felt full after eating little, and the 15 minute walk that was part of my journey to work made me feel breathless. One day I was prodding my tummy and wondered why it felt so hard if it was just fat. And that's when I went to my GP. The GP examined me and felt a mass which he thought was probably fibroids and referred me for a scan. I asked about waiting times and was told three months. I said no way was I waiting that long and I, I would pay to have it done privately and it was a good job I did. Two days later I had an ultrasound, then a CT scan and a blood test at a local hospital. I later saw a consultant who suspected ovarian cancer. I was referred to a more specialist hospital for surgery 10 days later, where they also did a biopsy to confirm cancer and what type. My symptoms made sense now. There was a tumour of 10 by 15 centimetres in my abdomen, pressing on my bladder, diaphragm and stomach and distending it. The tumour was so close to my bowel they weren't sure if it ad adhered or not and warned that I might come out of surgery with a colostomy. As it was, I had a great surgeon who managed a complete debulk without touching the bowel. I think the outcome would have been very different if I'd waited three months for a scan. Following surgery, I was referred to a gynaecological oncologist at the same hospital who told me I had stage three serous ovarian cancer. He explained everything about my surgery, ovarian cancer and general outcomes and about the treatment options. I agreed to join a trial evaluating outcomes of chemotherapy and was given a choice of treatments. I could either have single treatment carboplatin or combined carboplatin and taxol. He gave me the information and suggested I go by my gut reaction to decide, although I could have let him advise me if I'd wanted. My gut reaction was very strong in favour of carboplatin on its own, which I had every three weeks over a four month period. I started chemotherapy one month after surgery with very mixed emotions. I stopped working as soon as I knew I had cancer and took some time to come to terms with what was happening and all possible outcomes. And facing things head on left me feeling strong and positive and ready to face whatever the outcomes were. I was worried that my body wouldn't cope with the chemo and that I might explode as soon as it touched my veins. I didn't have a bad reaction to the infusion that day, but learned that the side effects kick in the next day. It wasn't as bad as I'd expected. It wasn't very nice in the first week after treatment, like a bad dose of flu with added extras, but I survived it and recovered each time ready for the next treatment. But the effects are cumulative, and by the final treatment I felt drained and thoroughly fed up with it. Despite my fear, my instinct had been to embrace chemotherapy, whatever it was like, because it was going to help me. And so it did. I responded really well to it. Before surgery, my CA125 was 1900. At the end of treatment, it was 9, and the follow-up scan was clear. Post-treatment, I attended the gynae oncology clinic every three months for a blood test, a follow-up appointment and physical exam with the gynae oncologist or one of his team. I finished treatment in November 2007 and went back to work in December. I felt like I was recovering over the next nine months, but then in autumn, my CA125 rose slightly and it continued to rise with each further blood test, rising over time from 9 to 120, indicating that the cancer was returning. I knew that with stage 3 it usually does return, so 
Although I wasn't happy, I wasn't too surprised. I also felt that my demanding job wasn't helping matters, so I requested early retirement on medical grounds, which was granted months later. After I finished work, I felt very tired and didn't want to do much for the first two months. Then my energy returned and my CA125 started to go down with each blood test. I took on some part-time consultancy work two days a week, mostly working from home with flexible hours allowing me to rest when I felt I needed to. The cancer returned in 2012 and the scan showed several enlarged lymph nodes. I had a biopsy removing one lymph node and then started chemotherapy. I had single treatment carboplatin again, which hit me a bit harder than it had the first time. This time my remission lasted for two years. The cancer returned again in 2014 and the scan showed one small tumour at the head of the pancreas. I had surgery, but it wasn't possible to remove the tumour as it was touching the pancreas and would have caused other health problems if they cut into it. However, the surgeon did have a look around the whole abdominal area, removed scar tissue from previous surgery, which had started to block the bowel, but she couldn't see any other signs of cancer at all. I had chemotherapy one month later. This time it was calyx and carboplatin. Within minutes of the first calyx infusion, I had an unbearable throbbing pain in my lower back. They stopped the infusion and the consultant advised that it was a fairly rare reaction, but suggested slowing it down from one to three hours. That worked and I continued without any pain. It also happened that the calyx was depleting my immune system more than expected, so the dose was reduced by the fourth cycle. Each time I've had chemo, apart from the first one, I felt safe and confident the staff on the ward are taking good care and keeping a watch for any reactions or other problems. Calyx was harder on my body than previous treatments. It lasted for six months, left me feeling tired and weak a lot of the time and made my skin very sensitive to everything. Staying in the shower too long with the water on my back caused little scabs to form where it had broken the skin. I was more prone to blisters on my heels, more prone to eczema and dry skin generally, as well as much more sensitive to the sun. That treatment finished in December 2014, just after I'd moved into my new house. My CA125 had gone down to nine and the scan was clear. It took longer to recover from this time, but three and a half years later, I'm still in remission and feel really well. I continue to have a blood test and follow up every three months and have come to consider this a chronic condition I can live with, with intermittent bouts of chemo.